Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Jamie and Marcus here. From Aroma Time in Allenville. What are we talking about today? We are talking about cognac. Cognac. And our favorite cognac. So I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about cognac and why this is our favorite cognac and, uh, you know, the, the different tasting glasses and how you should taste it. So I feel that cognac has kind of lost some traction over the years. I think the bourbon craze, rye, American whiskey craze has kind of come in and um, sort of affected cognac. When we first opened 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, cognac was still extremely popular. And now we've, we've watched these sales kind of diminish. And I can only assume that it's bourbon because bourbon sales are through the roof. There's all bourbon, kinds rye, of bourbon's rise. American whiskeys yes. are through the roof right now. And uh, there's really, that's partly because of all the local American whiskeys bourbons that you can make in New York. Cognac you cannot make in New York. You can only make it in Cognac, France. However, Cognac is brandy. So brandy is the overlying family, or the big family, the big picture. And under that you have Cognac, which comes from Cognac, France. And you have um, Armagnac, which comes from Armagnac. And you got a great Armagnac less than a couple weeks ago at the food show. We sure did. At the International Wine Spirits Tasting. Uh, we met a Cognac maker and he had I'm um, sorry Armagnac maker Armagnac. He, had, he had a white Armagnac and all the aged ones and beautiful stuff he did stuff. and he went uh, he t let us taste side by side yeah. the different Armagnacs and yeah yeah it was, it was awesome. beautiful, beautiful great experience sure was uh, I learned some stuff that day too so the main difference between Armagnac and Cognac is do you know the difference between the two I do but I just let, let's tell everybody the, okay. the differences so, I think it's from a different region right different region different region, different region is, 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 is mostly this is Armagnac this is the Clé du uh, VSOP Armagnac, and this is the Kelt VSOP Cognac. So both are made from grapes. The unique thing about these versus whiskey, bourbon, and rye is those are grains. Those are grains that they pick, ferment, uh, you know, boil, mash, ferment, and right. make into um, and distill into a whiskey. These are made from grapes. This is actually wine first. This is wine. It's made from grapes. Made from grapes, so it's kind wine. Of a little fast, so you yes. can hear the grape part. So it's made from grapes, which makes it a wine first. They actually make a, a very acidic wine, uh, short fermented wine out of this, that then they distill into cognac. So that's the main difference between a bourbon, a bourbon, corn, whiskey, being uh, wheat. Uh, or grains, cereal grains, and this is actually made from grapes. So they're a vineyard first. They're a vineyard, then the distillery. Um, we're going to specifically talk about our favorite one here. Let's push everything else yeah. aside. Kelt Cognac. Why is that your favorite? This was what I was introduced to at the Broadmoor many years ago. My last night at the Broadmoor when I worked in Colorado Springs in 96, 96 1997. Uh, my last night there, I was sous chef in the Penrose room, and the last night they gave me some taste of cognac. And of course, as a chef apprentice, as a chef, as a consumer, a lot of people are always taught Louis Trey, the, uh, the, the uh, Louis the Thirteenth Napoleon cognac as being one of the best cognacs. Now they also have a version too. Kelt, Kelt has, a, has a version. Yeah, we've tasted. We've tasted some of their. We've tasted some of their upper tier. Yeah, the Commodore, by the way, which we don't have anymore. The, oh, we do have the Commodore. Oh, we have a little bit of the Commodore left. This. This right here was named Spirit of the Year 2015. Did you know that? By one of the big international competitions, like 10,000 spirits enter this competition blind taste. The Commodore won Best Cognac and Best Spirit wow. of the Year. So this is a very special one. This was 2015. I didn't realize we had uh, some of that left. Uh, they make an XO. This is the VSOP. The neat thing about Kelt is, oh, so back to the Broadmoor. They walked me through, they did a little tasting on the Cognac cart. And they tasted the Louis the Trey with me, and they tasted this their version of Louis the Trey, and the Kelt was amazing. Wow. Literally amazing. I was like, what is this cognac we're tasting? And they explained it was Kelt. So what is the story behind Kelt? Because Kelt has a unique story. Kelt it? has a wonderful story. 100 years ago, 150 years ago, you would ship barrels, oak barrels, across the sea to the destination, and at the destination, they would get bottled. That's just the way it worked. So what happened in the last hundred years or so, 75 years, you had the brands that wanted their emblem on it, that wanted their logos on it. And so they would be, everything would be bottled at the distillery and then shipped overseas. Well, what happens when you take a barrel and put it on a, on a vessel and ship it 
across, you know, for two, three months. Well, it's you constantly have, moving. It's constantly moving. So imagine an oak barrel just moving and all of that brandy or whatever you're serving, whiskey or whatever, creating, scraping against the oak constantly for months. That's called the allure of the ocean because of different barometric pressures and the different temperatures, up and down temperatures, expand the oak, let flavors go in, seal it off again, expand and close. If you've never noticed some of the um, uh, uh, like bourbon places, whiskey, American whiskey places, some of their warehouses are heated because mm. the oak then is open and can get into the whiskey more. So up and down temperatures are also known to, to increase that as well, which is why Kentucky is one of the reasons Kentucky is home of great bourbon because the temperature and of course the limestone water. So Kelt brings back the allure of the ocean. They take this, they put it in the barrels, oak barrels, send it for a 120 day voyage. It's 120 days around the globe, goes through the Panama Canal, goes around and through Asia. And each bottle of Kelt, do we have a new bottle of Kelt around? We do. Oh yeah, we do, we got a new bottle. So each bottle has a tag here with the ports of call of where it's, where all these places that where the ship is actually docked and been and visited. And it's right in here. Oh, I can't help in this. Yeah, so they list off inside there all the places that this has been right there. Uh, hard to see with the camera. So there you go. That's all the places that the barrel has been. That's they cool. ship it back to France and then it gets bottled ah. and then sent to a step in the destination. So that's called the allure of the ocean. So, ocean matured. Ocean matured. One of the only spirits that we that we personally know of that does that practice still, that allure of the ocean. Um, and how to taste cognac. Cognac, these are the three glasses that we would recommend tasting cognac in. Uh, this being the traditional, uh, you have the traditional brandy snifter. This being the traditional brandy snifter, you can hold it, uh, warms up the swirling. cognac. Do not swirl. No swirling. No cognac. swirling. No swirling mm -hmm. cognac or you shouldn't swirl whiskey. Interesting. You swirl wine. Whose rule is that? That's what the that's, that's what, the rule. That's what the experts say. Well, we're not experts. That's what the experts say, <laughs> the aficionados. So, will you warm it up in your hand like this? Is where you how you warm up uh, cognac because you want it room temperature mm -hmm. or warm. Uh, this is also some of the connoisseurs' favorite glasses. It's just basically almost the same, uh, but it's there's no stem in it, and you can actually hold it and have it in your hand like that at all times. This is a. Uh, this is like a sherry glass. A true cognac or whiskey glass would flare off just a touch, it would flare out a little bit. This is the glass that I like to sip tequila in, and I think I might switch cognac into this glass as well. Hmm, that's um, not the right glass, is it? It's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you could be unrealistic when you want to be. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> so, you go answer that, and I will. Uh, talk more. So, you don't want to swirl the cognac. When you when you when you sniff cognac, keep your mouth open. You don't want to swirl because it's going to really bring more of the flavors and more of the alcohol burn. So you don't want to get that alcohol burn on your nose. So that's why you're going to avoid avoid the swirling. Now again, you can hold and you can warm up. Mouth open. Three sniffs. They say each sniff brings out different flavors and different things in the cognac that you're that you're smelling. Mm. Mm. This has a great sweetness on it, the oak, the vanilla that comes out in here. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Now, most people will sip cognac. They'll sip it. They typically don't add. They typically don't add ice into it. If you want to add ice, you can. Some people swear the yeah, don't you drink you add ice. That's what some people swear. It's basically up to you if you want to do that. But typically, most people do not put ice in their cognac. <clears throat> most people will drink it out of a brandy snifter like that. Um, and sometimes they might want to put one small cube, one small rock in there, which is perfectly fine. It's totally up to you. But you notice a lot of people will just will just sniff that. And like I said again, this is my choice of, of tasting tequila, tasting cognac, uh, tasting spirits. I like this style glass. This is like a porter sherry glass. This is from uh, Rydell. Rydell makes this glass. It's a very universal glass. This is also great for champagne or cava. 
If I had to pick one glass to, to really taste out of and, and use, it would be this glass right here. So. Are you tasting? We're tasting. So I'm going to walk you through the tasting oh, here. Okay. This is Jamie was answering the phone, taking reservations. 647-3000 if you want to make a reservation. Or leave a comment on here. We'll, we'll take your reservation. So when you smell cognac, mm -hmm. no swirling, remember. Mouth open, three sniffs. Get your nose in there and three sniffs. Um, and take a break from each sniff. Mouth has to be open? Your mouth, you, yes, they say, they say your mouth needs to be open to a certain extent. Okay. So the... Your first one, if you swirl, I was explaining, if you swirl and you get that in your nose, you're going to get a lot of alcohol in your nose and it's going to burn your palate. It's going to burn your, burn your nose and burn your palate uh, temporarily there. So sniff, mouth open, sniff in, and make sure that you um, do like three individual tastes. The first time you're going to do it, smell the alcohol. The second time you're going, to, you're going to really smell the oak. And it's really going to help the overall, your first overall experience in tasting. You can really taste the uh, the vanilla, the the sweet, uh, sweet on the palate. Mm -hmm. This is this is a beautiful cognac. This is an amazing cognac. It's delicious. So Kelt. Taste that oak in there. You can definitely taste the oak, and it's sweet. The vanilla, it's delicious. The nose is just amazing on this. So we do have other cognacs here. Don't think we're only partial to Kelt. We love Kelt. Um, this Gabrielson is amazing. Uh, this is, they say, the fifth largest cognac producer in France. Wow. But the thing about cognac, you have Hennessy, Remy, Covassier. You have the big, like, four guys that dominate the market. And, like, the fourth or fifth guy falls way, way down in the chart. So even though this might be the fifth or so largest, they're very still a very, very small mm. house. It's like Champagne. The big guys, Tottinger, Moet, they dominate the top. And the next people right after them fall way down in a massive curve. So this is really neat because they um, age this in oak barrels. I'm not sorry, American, uh, American oak bourbon. This is aged in bourbon barrels. Is it? Bourbon barrels, American oak bourbon. Aged in oak barrels, American Mer Tennessee oak barrels. Tennessee oak barrels. I believe it's American whiskey or American. Um, yeah. So this is really neat about this. So this actually has a bit of a different flavor uh, because it has that American influence on it. One more. One more. I always tell people when you taste wine, never comment on your first sip of wine. Oh, yeah, no. You know, people taste wine and their palate's not adjusted. They're like, oh, I don't like that. I'm like, put it down, relax, swirl. Don't make, don't make a comment yet. Take a bite of food with it if you have to or something. Mm. This has more, more sweetness to it. More. Right, it's it's a bit different. Totally different. It's a bit different, totally absolutely. Different, yeah. So that was sort of our cognac 101. Quick our uh, cognac, come taste our some Kelt. cognacs. Yep, Kelt cognac. Um, really, like Kelt, cognac is good stuff. That just like I said, not enough people are drinking cognac. Uh, the American whiskeys have have kind of have kind of uh, overshadowed. Uh, but uh, this video is to hopefully educate you and encourage you to try some. Mm -hmm. Cognacs, um, I would say you've probably had access to Remy and Cavassier. Mm. And try some off the beaten path. Uh, try some different ones. When you go to a restaurant or you go to your, your next liquor store to buy stuff, ask for something that is uh, you know smaller, independently yep. produced, uh, craft produced, uh, something that's much, much smaller like Kelt or any of these other brands. Uh, we have Tiffon as well. This is an XO. Maybe one of the next videos we'll talk about the aging. Because this is an XO. This is a VSOP. They also make a... Uh, there's also a VSO, X, uh, a VS, VSOP, XO, Napoleon, and we'll talk about maybe the aging specifications of that. Because there's certain ones that you don't want to mix in cocktails. There's other ones you do want to mix in cocktails based upon their age. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Um, yeah, that was excellent. Leave any comments, any questions. If you want to stop and taste some cognacs, we'd be happy to re... re um, uh, Taste you on some things. Yeah, taste, taste you. Do exactly. Reincarnate what we just did here and, and talk to you about cognac and Armagnac. We'll do a thing on Armagnac as well. The biggest difference between Armagnac and cognac, cognac's distilled twice. Armagnac is only Distilled once. once. Cognac is typically the majority 90 plus percent um, Ungi Blanc grape. Armagnac, 
Un Guy Blanc maybe only makes 50% of it. Mm. Then you have Foley, uh, you have Colombard. There's three or four grapes that are actually... The, one of the really cool things about Cognac is, because it's a wine first and it gets characteristics of the wine and then distilled, there's about 470 components, I heard. 470 flavor components really? for Cognac, as opposed to 150 or 200 for bourbon. So it's a much more complex profile characteristics in cognac versus uh, versus regular bourbon or whiskey because it was a wine first. And that's it. Chef Marcus Giuliano. And Jamie. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Leave a like. And come on down and taste cognac and armagnac. See you soon.